Looking for Lucy, Groucho, Martin and Lewis, Classic Sci-Fi? We have them all here on Classic TV. Way back Machine One. Subscribe today. Classic TV. Way back Machine One. Sir, thank you. Same as last time. That beer is cold. It better be. What's the matter? Don't I rate a sack, brother in law? My poor sister's dead. You mean nothing to me no more. Nothing. You meant nothing to me when she was alive. Judge. Good morning. Good morning. Do you carry hair tint? What color? Blonde. One more. This is our big seller, one dollar. And this one's a lighter shade, very popular, two dollars. Is that a fast color? Well, yes, but I wouldn't go in swimming without no bathing cap, which we carry. Now, never mind, I'll just take this. So that's public enemy number one. That's him, all right. We better put these up all over the county. Just routine, FBI. It's a shame a bum like that can kill five people and get away with it. Six. The FBI man he wounded in Amarillo died yesterday. Well, come on, let's get started. No good, Clint. A fine brother-in-law you got, August. What's the matter? Yesterday, he tells me on the phone, come in and pick up my car. I get a lift all the way in from the ranch, and he isn't even here. Clint's not in his shop? I waited around an hour for him to show up. Well, if he isn't in his shop, I don't know where he can be. Well, uh, I'll be back later. He's wasted my whole day. I hope he does. Then we'll nail him. Uh, he looks like a pretty rough fellow. So they say. <laughs> you don't think so? No. Well, I've already shot quite a few people. But he's real tough. Two FBI men, 
Two old bank tellers, a frightened old lady, and a cross-eyed constable. You're trying to say the FBI men were soft? They were shot from ambush. Mm. You seem to know quite a bit about this fellow. I know this. He's just another hood. Yellow. Take his gun away and he's just another guy, like... Well, like you. Like me? <laughs> a terrible man like that? Oh, you must be kidding. Excuse me. And who is that character? <laughs> Name's Herbert Hammond. Dabbles in art. Living on Papa's money, we understand. We get all kinds here. You can say that again. Hi, beautiful. Good morning. How about a swim? No, thank you. Mr. Hammond. Yes? Uh, that lady over there like to see you. Uh. Why didn't you say you had a date? Goodbye. And I think I spent five bucks on her for dinner. Ah, what she sees in that creep is beyond me, fella. Say, how about a little sport? Yeah? Such as? Do you think the creek can swim? Thanks a lot. Thank you. Morning, Hammond. Good morning. Been in the water? Well, no, not yet. I say it's fine. Yeah. We think you ought to go in the water. To tell you the truth, I, uh, I didn't plan to go in at all. You see, I'm subject to colds. Oh. He's subject to colds, Tony. What a shame. Have a gold cigar and get lost. Thank you, Mr. Hammond. Now, tell me something about yourself. Not to tell. You see, he's modest on top of it. What a guy. It was thrilling to watch. Let me say it again. You did me a big favor, really. I think you did rather well yourself. Well, oh, thanks. But I still detest brutality. Tell me, Morgan. How long have you been in the sheriff business? Oh, I guess just about all my working years. Did you ever think about giving it up? A friend of mine owns an island in the Gulf of California. It's small, there's nothing but goats on it now. But there's a natural deep water harbor there, and it's not far from Acapulco. You follow me? Maybe I'm a couple of steps behind. Well, I'll close the gap. I'll build a plush hotel down there. We'll have liquor, gambling, anything money can buy. And get this, there's no taxes on the profit. Mexico forgot to claim that island, so we'll set up our own government. What am I, Congress? <laughs> You're getting warm. You'll be Admiral of the Gunboat Navy and General of the Tin Star Army. You'll keep the riffraff out, and uh, you'll let the mink coats in. Now, would that be worth 20000 a year to you? Nope. <laughs> Why not? Will Sheriff Morgan please come to the office? Well, before I go, Hammond, I'll tell you why not. The United States is the only island I want. And if you can't understand that, mister, I'm not going to try to explain. I, uh, I figured a guy like you would be tough to pay off, so I folded this up nice and tight for you. Hmm? I put it in your pocket. Nobody's looking. You're too generous with Papa's money. Well, I hear you had a little workout. Yeah. I almost got marooned on a desert island. <laughs> Call came in. Seems a druggist down on 10th Street lost his brother-in-law. And what's he complaining about? <laughs> Come on. He isn't anywhere. I've, I've called everybody I know. He just isn't around. But if a man's gone for only a few hours, we can't call him a missing person. 
My brother-in-law runs a very busy shop. He works six, seven days a week all by himself. He never takes time off in the middle of the day. Have you tried to contact his home? He lives at the back of the store with me. He's not there. And uh, you say the other fellow, the one whose car was promised, came back. That's right. Let me take a look. You don't think that short beer could have turned into a long one, do you? No, Clint's too stingy to drink in a bar. In the 20 years he was married to my sister, he didn't buy her three new dresses, didn't go on one vacation, didn't even take her to a picture show. He just worked, ate, and slept, and she waited on him hand and foot up till the day she died. Well, you don't mean to say he hasn't showed up yet? I decided the best thing was to call the sheriff. What'd you do that for? Uh, excuse me, Sheriff. Oh, uh, you've heard of the Riggs Turkey Ranch? Well, that's me. I'm Emery Riggs. Uh, I'd like to chit-chat with you boys, but I'm going to get the car back to the ranch. We understand. Good. Well, Clint must have the key. There you are. Oh, thanks. <laughs> must be stuck. be back, August. Don't be such a worrier. We'll keep our eyes open. If we find anything, we'll let you know right away. I'd appreciate that very much. You bet. on all points on that auto mechanic of ours. Harry, if a guy hates his brother-in-law, why would he call in the sheriff to locate him before anyone else has even noticed he's missing? Well, that's easy. When a man's waving a flag, you don't look at his face. You look at the flag. Yeah, maybe. Like to see the sheriff. Frank. This lady likes to see you. I'll bring her in. All right, this way. I'd have come over sooner, but I don't get off till 5 o'clock. Be seated, Miss... Uh... Long, Alice Long. Age 50, single. <laughs> so far. Uh, may I? You make yourself right at home. Oh, my, that's good. I guess my feet must know what time it is. Uh, by coming over, I'm missing the supper. I have to be back at the drugstore at 6 o'clock. You, uh, have something to tell us? I do. I certainly do. Hate to see anybody made a fool of. Oh, well, now, who's being made a fool of, Miss Long? You two. That boss of mine, making you two chase all over the county looking for his brother-in-law, when he knows good and well what's happened to him. Well, what did happen to him? Well, he just moved out, that's all, like he told August he would. And I don't blame him. Why not? But you ought to heard the way August kept nagging at Clint. You mean they argued right in the store? In the back. You see, uh, they eat supper when I get back six o'clock. They've been batching ever since Clint's wife died. Oh, what a mess that kitchen must be in. I can hear every word over the petition, you see. Well, uh, suppose you tell us, Miss Long, not every word, just uh, every other word. Well, it was always just one subject. Every night when they sat down, August accused Clint of driving the sister to an early grave. 
What does Clint have to say? Oh, pass the potatoes, quit hogging the mustard, never seemed to mind at all. Except last night. Well, what happened last night? Well, you could hear every word they said just as if they was right in the store. They was both shouting. What'd they say? August was on his favorite subject, the sister. And then I heard him say very clear, if I'd been half a man, I'd have killed you a long time ago for her sake. You don't deserve to live. You're nothing. Go on, Miss Long. Well, and then Clint said, well, if that's the way you feel, then I'm moving out. The only reason I'm staying is for her sake. She would have wanted me to stay here and help you out with the board money. But this is the limit. And then August come back into the store looking sick. He was angry. And you figure that Clint just moved out. Exactly. Well, then why did August call us in? For appearance sake. August had fancy customers, family people, you know. They've known him and his sister for 25 years. And he's afraid Clint will go around saying that he threw his brother-in-law out with a sister hardly cold in her grave, and he's just trying to make it appear that Clint's leaving by his own choice. Well, uh, thank you very much, Miss Long. Well, you're not going to keep on chasing him down, I hope. Well, uh, Sheriff's Office, Morgan speaking. Well, we'll be right over. No, Miss Long, we're not going to keep on chasing him. He's dead. That was the turkey rancher. Clint's been shot and killed. Let's go, Harry. But you, you're going to arrest August? Well, what else can we do, Miss Long? Oh, but August's a fine person. He's got principles he wouldn't kill. You just told me he threatened to kill Clint. Well, if I'd known Clint had been shot, I... You wouldn't have come. Well, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> in their lives. Don't you see, it's like a judgment. For years, I told her she'd made a terrible mistake in marrying him. She'd thrown her life away. And when she died so young, 40 years young, don't you think? It was as if the Lord had agreed with me. But the sin of pride is a terrible thing. I was wrong. Just a few months, Clint has joined her in death. Somebody helped him along. What difference does that make? Don't you want to find and punish the killer? You don't understand. A higher power did not wish those two to be kept apart. How Clint died is unimportant. A few hours ago, you were awful anxious for us to find him. That was for my sister's sake. Now she can take care of him herself. I'm going to play it open with you, August. Last night, someone overheard you threaten to kill Clint. Today, you call us to try to locate him. And we find out he's murdered, and you want us to drop the case. Does that make any sense to you? It most certainly does. You have your duty to perform, Sheriff. I won't stand in your way. I don't want to. But I will not oppose what has been decreed. No power on this earth can make me do that. Then you don't want to make a statement. What is that, a state? All right, Harry, bookie. Suspicion of murder. All right, August. Send me your pockets. You know the old lady's right? He's not the murdering type. Nope. Well... What the devil's this? Some people do on signboards. Harry, you're due for a raise. Thanks, but, uh... I think I kept that guy out of the pool. Huh. What are you talking about? How would you like to pick up Dylan? Dylan here? Right here. Right under our nose. Well, what are we waiting for? Get Fred and the others. Hello? Yes? Now, listen to me carefully. It's important. Get all the people away from the pool and back in their cabins. And keep them there. There'll probably be some gunplay. Yeah, Hammond.
He's over there in number 10. You should go back in the office and wait there. All right. Pete? Pearl? Cover the side of the house. Right. You cover me. Gotcha. the girl. Wait a minute. Here. That's for my room. Save it. I'll be back. Don't count on it. If you'd like to take a look at the gun that killed our auto repair man. Ballistics just checked it out against those slugs. What'd you find it in August's room? No, Dillon's. Dillon's? Huh. Man kills many times, Harry. Goes to the gas chamber once. You know, I hate to give that character back to the FBI. We can take awfully good care of him here. Bring August out here. I think I tried to pin it on that poor devil.